Now, right. Now I've got some suggestions to make. You may or may not agree with them. It doesn't worry me unduly, but I hope that I do strike a chord with most of you. There needs to be greater consultation and information sharing. And I'm very pleased to see that Roger, Roger Sutton uh, has made that one of his priorities. There's been far too little uh, consultation and information sharing. It's been a constant irritation and worry uh, to citizens, particularly in the eastern areas, which have been particularly hard hit, that they don't know what's or haven't known what is going on. And um, I know that, that they feel neglected. I've been to some meetings where their concerns have been expressed. Just remember that knowledge is power and it's important consultation and information sharing. There's need for much lower central city. I think five stories as a maximum, personally I'd rather have lower, I think, but we need a, a lower city. I've always thought since we went sort of high rise in the 60s that those buildings look totally inappropriate in the flat on the flat terrain of Canterbury. They stood out like sore thumbs, I think, and I helped write a book on the history of the buildings around Cathedral, Cathedral Square, and I always thought it was a great shame that in the 60s and 70s, when they pulled down some lovely old buildings and replaced them with those ghastly glass sort of monoliths, that they towered over the cathedral. The cathedral should have had a clear uh, space uh, around it so that the, the, its tower could be seen. It's been dwarfed by, or was dwarfed by, those ghastly buildings. Mind you, this is my own personal view. Um, I think, too, that, oh, and that the new buildings need to be compatible with the, those around them. Uh, an example of this, you, some of you probably won't agree with me about this, I always thought that the new uh, um, cathedral, what I call it tuck shop, was totally inappropriate. It ruined the line of the cathedral. I wouldn't go in there on principle, not to, I'd go into the cathedral, but not into the tuck shop on principle. I just thought it ruined the line of the cathedral, and also it had an adverse impact on that magnificent war memorial. So we need to be aware of what the, you know, what's surrounding them. Uh, there needs to be greater use, I think, of wood in construction. Uh, wooden buildings seem to have come out of the uh, earthquake, some, in some cases much better than the newer buildings. My, the house I live in is, was built in 1897, and it's wooden. It does have um, uh, well, the stucco on it, but it survived, and it survived pretty well single story too. Uh, I think there, there should be no one-way streets. Now, I, I realise this is controversial, but I live on a one-way street, and it's a highway, actually, or it was a highway, and night and, night and day, uh, cars shot through, big trucks shot through. It's, it wasn't a nice place to live in from that point of view, and the the one-way street become a highway, and uh, b uh, they bring people through the city, through it, but not into it. Very few of the vehicles that went along Montreal Street actually turned into the inner city. There should be speed restrictions in the central uh, business district. Going through at 50 mile an hour plus is far too fast in that sort of area. There should be no car parks in empty spaces, which is what we are prone to, do, to doing. Those spaces, while they're there, should be greened. And there should be a lot of greening now, but we have an opportunity to do it. We need to make the city people friendly so that there are trees there, there are spaces for people to, to, uh, to sit, to relax, and to walk. There should be, uh, the, the inner city should be more pedestrian friendly. There should be limited car parking, smaller buses, 
and cheaper fares. I think if you want to get people into the city and away from those huge malls, you've got to do something to attract them in. And the buses, the big buses that go down Montreal Street, you're lucky if there's one or two, one or two people in them. They're normally virtually empty. It seems to me a great waste of space, petrol and whatever else. The university should not return to the inner city, as has been suggested. For one thing, uh, the, here it's too small, the area is too small. It shifted out to Ireland because we didn't have space. I had to go to a number of lectures in houses around um, Cashel Street, for example, because they couldn't cater for all the students on the university site. Uh, the university belongs out at Ireland. It has the space there, has the facilities, not the inner city. Nor should there be, um, apparently someone suggested, there shouldn't be, I'm sorry, I'm looking for this, I wrote it down in a hurry. Hagley Park needs to be kept intact. There shouldn't be roads or anything like that going through Hagley Park. Remember Mayor Guthrie lost his uh, mayoral election because he tried to build a road through North Hagley Park. There should, should be nothing like that there. And actually, I'm going to put in a... I also feel that no more of Hagley Park should be taken by the cricket, New Zealand cricket, or by the hospital, which has had a field day. All the land in the hospital that the hospital has is Hagley Park land, which actually belongs or belonged to the citizens of Christchurch. I'm, I suspect they want more. First public protest in Christchurch was in 1859, and it was hands off Hagley Park. Um, there, should be, there should be precincts, such as cultural precinct, business precinct, retail, entertainment. Uh, I'm not sure whether, well, we know where the cultural one ought to be. We know probably where the retail one will be, uh, near Ballantines. But there definitely should be precincts, I think. There should be no buildings over former springs. You know the sort of springs I mean. Yeah. So I think that's been a problem here. And when I've seen uh, foundations being prepared for apartments in my area, the amount of water that they have to drain out is incredible. And some of those places will, uh, have been badly affected by um, li liquefaction and things. Anyway, it makes for an unstable foundation, I, I think. There also, I feel, should be a second sewerage plant in the west of the city. Our existing one at uh, Bromley is overloaded, badly damaged, and um, we all are having to watch our water consumption. There should be a second sewerage plant in the west, near the Waimakariri. And of course, I think too, I suspect that when uh, rebuilding starts in the suburbs, a lot of the people in the east of the city won't be living there because of unstable foundations, liquefaction and things like that, there will probably be a drift over to the west of the city. So uh, we, need to, we need to prepare for that. Um, now I've forgotten, got carried away and I've forgotten to use this. All right, now that's Cathedral Square in the 1880s or 90s. And you can see, well, it's pretty deserted. There are not very many buildings there, but some of those buildings were taken down in the 18, 1960s and replaced by those glass abominations. But look how, how striking the cathedral looks because you can see it, its lines, and the, uh, the tuck shop isn't there either. Oh, pressed the wrong thing. That's uh, the square. You can see some of those monoliths behind uh, on a market day in the square. Sorry about this. That's the cathedral as it is at the moment, with the tower gone, and I presume the tuck shop's gone too.
But, but it's, it's, it's a sad sight, isn't it? It really is. And when I hope they will rebuild the cathedral, but I hope they also make sure that, that, that it's built so that it can be appreciated and not swamped by these awful buildings. There's our city, and my Maori pronunciation isn't good enough to repeat. Uh, now that's been quite badly damaged. It's in our area, the inner city, but I hope that they can um, repair that. It looks sort of as though it can be. I hope it can anyway. That, oh God, what's that? Oh, that's the provincial council buildings. Now that is, is that's, that's very sad. I don't know whether they'll be able to repair that, but I don't know how many of you have actually been into the uh, provincial council chambers. Uh, it had the most beautiful um, hall in there, hall, meeting place. And our provincial council buildings were the only ones left in New Zealand uh, from the period when we had provincial government. The prov provincial government was abolished in 1876, but that was the only one left. So I'd like to think that it can be replaced. I'd love to think it can be replaced because that was one of our most striking buildings, but you really had to go into, inside to appreciate it. <laughs> 